Welcome to the channel everybody, thank you for clicking on this video. In today's video I'm going to show you how to colour correct your Sony S-Log footage. Let's run the intro. Like I say in today's video I'm going to show you how to colour correct your Sony S-Log video footage. So let's jump straight into it right now. Okay then, so we've loaded up three clips here into Adobe Premiere. I have this one of a back garden that looks a little bit wonky. Hey, but it won't matter, we're only uh, adjusting the colours. It's good for what we need it for. Uh, so we've got a garden there. Uh, the second clip is a very overcast roundabout with some traffic driving around it. And the third clip is a path with some clouds moving overhead. And we're going to be correcting our S-Log Sony footage. Now I would just like to point out, I'm going to be showing you how I work, um, walk through my method of correcting this. Um, now depending on your clips, you may find that this method isn't suited to you, but at least it will give you a starting point to see how I do it and then you'll be able to adjust accordingly to your projects. So the first thing that we need to do, or you need to do it in your video editor, is make sure you've got at least a histogram open. This is a histogram over here. If you don't know how a histogram works, basically the top up here, this represents our bright or white areas in our shop. So like the sky would be represented up here at the minute because we're running a flat profile S-Log, it's down here. But if I just move these whites, Watch this histogram raise up as we move the whites. So the very top of the chart here represents pure white. Right at the bottom is pure black. If I just move the blacks, you can see that it's moving the histogram. Uh, this is called a parade. It's very similar to a histogram. Shows you the color representatives. Um, as you can see, it lines up perfectly with our histogram and as we move our blacks or whites, it moves accordingly. So we're going to be using these to judge our footage and get it corrected. Um, sometimes the histogram is horizontal in certain programs, but it works exactly the same. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to start correcting this clip here. Now, what you normally want to do is get a white selector and just double check that your white balance is correct by clicking on something that's white in the shot. There we go. Now, I had an interesting question on my last video about what if there is nothing white in your shot. Well, you can always adjust the temperature and or the tint according to your own personal taste. Um, as we saw there, when I selected that white, it made it go a little bit more warmer than what I like. So I'm just going to turn it down a bit. Remember, this is all subjective to what you want the look to look like ultimately. All we're going to be doing today is correcting the footage and if you ultimately there's no right or wrong way to correct it. It's just personal choice at the end of the day. So bear that in mind also. Right, so we've done our white balance. Next, we go to exposure. Now this is the key to grading S-Log because it's a very, very flat profile uh, and it underexposes the image to protect the highlights. This is what I like to do. I expose correctly in camera. So this clip has been exposed correctly in camera. But if we look at the histogram, where it's favoring, it's favoring more towards the darks than the, the, the highlights. And the reason for that, like I say, is the flat profile of S-Log protecting our highlights. So what I do is, if we look at this line over here, this 50 50 marker across here. I'm going to raise our variations of between black and white so we've got an equal amount above 50 as we have below 50. So this is going to be our gauge or it'll be halfway through our histogram. So I'm going to raise it up until I've got equal measures above and below. So roughly there. So we've got equal amounts above the 50 line as we have below the line. Next, what we do, we raise the contrast. Uh, my setting I normally like to go to is around 80. 
So I'm going to punch in 80, and all I'm going to do is make sure that we've not gone over 100 or we're below zero. Now, like I say, depending on your project, you may find, say, you're taking a picture of the sky, then you would adjust that accordingly. But I find for a clip that has got lots of variations in colors and shades, 80 is a good starting point, and that's a perfect, perfect for this clip here. Next, what we're going to do, we're going to raise the whites up to the 95, 95 line. Now, as you can see, there ain't a 95 line on here, but we're going to guess where 95 would be. So I'm just going to raise it up to about there, say 22. That's If you look, there's 90, 100, 95 would be halfway between, and we're roughly there. I'm trying not to blow out our highlights in our video clip. Then the last thing we do, actually second from the last thing we do, we're going to bring down our blacks until we're just touching zero. So we're just going to lower that until our blacks just touch zero. And so that's minus 13.5. And look at the spread now we got through the different highlights and shadows. We've really stretched out then colors and shades. The last thing I like to do is change the saturation. Now this is personal taste, but my number I go to is 130. So we punch that in, and there we go. That clip is now corrected. If I play this along and switch it off. So that's it before, uncorrected, and then we'll put it on, and there it is corrected. And it's pretty, we follow the same process on each of the clips. So let's move on to the next clip. Okay, so this is the next clip, a very overcast day, but the same process still works, exactly the same. So we find something that's white, just to double check that white balance. And there we go. Now we go to exposure, and like I said before, I aim, so there's 50% below 50 and 50% 50 above, gauging off our histogram or our parade here. So if you watch over here, as I raise the exposure, and we'll try and get it roughly, probably about there, I'd say. So nearly one stop over on exposure. That's just, uh, like I said before, S-Log is a very flat profile and it tends to underexpose to protect the highlights. So we've got the exposure correct. Now what I do with a contrast, like I said before, I like 80 and that's a good starting point punch that in, just checking it's not gone above 95 or hit 100, really you want it just below 95, that's how I like it, and it's not touching zero. Next we go to the whites, and we move it up to where 95 would be, so about 12.4, got 12.4 on this particular clip, and we lower the blacks until they're literally just touching the zero. So about 16.8 on this particular clip. Saturation again, personal choice, but I like 130. And there, there is the clip done. So it's pretty straightforward. We follow this same process all the way through. Uh, I never touch highlights or shadows because I use the whites and blacks and contrast. Uh, but let's run this through now, let's turn it back off again. So there it is before. Let's run the clip through and I'll turn it on. So there's it on. And there's it off before and after before and after so let's do the final clip and it's exactly the same process like we've been doing so we're going to try and find a white spot on our image there we go that corrects our white again that has just gone slightly too warm for my liking so i'm just going to lower it down a little bit now we go to exposure again, we look at that 50 line or halfway through our histogram and we're going to raise that until we get roughly half above and half below. So probably there we're looking at 1.5. So we've got a nice uh, even, even match between highlights and shadows. Now we're going to raise our contrast again, I like to go to 80. Punch that in, we've not 
touch 95 and we're still not touching 100 so now we just use the whites to raise it up to where 95 would be which is probably about there 52.4 on this particular clip and our blacks we lower it down just so they're touching the watt zero so probably around about oh i've reset it all <laughs> that sometimes can happen so let's quickly do that again let's raise it up halfway through 1.5 contrast 80 whites let's raise it up to about 95 so we're looking about 50 again and our blacks just gonna touch zero but see how quickly even though we reset that then how quickly you can really do a clip uh saturation 130 just a personal choice and there it is that's the final clip done as i play this through just what i would be looking for is just making sure my highlights in the sky and the clouds are not getting blown out might just turn because our whites are getting a little bit of maybe just above 95 i may turn them down but let's have a look so as it's playing i'm just gonna pull it back a little bit on the whites to 39 and there it is so i'm happy with that clip so let's run it through that's before and that's after before and after and it's as easy as that just following them few steps i hope that really gives you a good starting point to correcting your footage obviously from this point now we could go on to grade color grade our footage depending on how you see fit so there you have it it's fairly straightforward once you get the knack of adjusting your exposure to take into account s log really flat profile it's not my personal choice i much prefer hlg it's a lot easier to work with and i find ultimately it gives you very similar results but a lot easier to work with but i hope you've really enjoyed this video and you've got something out of it if you have give it a thumbs up if you want to see further videos from myself hit that subscribe button but for now that's it we'll catch up in the next video thanks for watching guys